guys we're back in the shop today um, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today uh, we're gonna be covering a D16 Y7 uh, intake swap go into the Y8 intake I've showed y'all that I did that a long time ago um, I actually did that before I was you know shooting any YouTube videos and stuff like that and this was actually a request from a subscriber that I met in a Facebook group and uh, I showed him my YouTube and stuff and he's been following so he asked me if I could cover it I've had a lot of people ask me questions about it so I kind of want to go over um, all the steps and everything that you need and uh, what I did and it's probably got you know five ten thousand miles on it so far everything's been fine so I'm gonna cover everything I did with that um, it's a lot better for boost and stuff like that if you're going turbo um, the Y7 intake is just not great Okay, so the first thing you can see is my turbo is missing <laughs> and AC is back on the car. So at the beginning of summer, I decided that I would really like to have AC back in the car. Um, this is my daily, my EK hatch that I had boosted. I pulled the turbo off. Um, when I did the turbo stuff, if you watched the short series, I made sure not to really like cut anything or chop anything up. So I was able to go completely back stock, stock computer. Um, this a few things you're going to need. You're going to need the intake, obviously. You're not necessarily going to have to use the white throttle cable. It's shorter and it's better because the Y7 one's like super long. So I would grab that from the junkyard while you're there. Um, this is the original Y7 throttle body. So you're going to be able to reuse literally everything um, except this little piece right here that hooks to the throttle cable. This is off of the Y8. Now you take it off the Y8 and you reverse it and it goes on here and it mounts with the like the factory location setup and it hooks up perfectly if you reverse it. So you need to take that off the Y8 throttle body while you're there. You need to take the throttle cable and you need to take the intake. That's literally all you need. Everything else is gonna be supplied with your current motor. Um, now as far as your your gasket goes right here. I'm running a Skunk 2 thermal uh, gasket. It is reusable. They're about 40 bucks. The throttle body gasket, when you go from a Y7 to a Y8, there's two models. If you go to advanced, a lot of times they will give you the wrong one. I will supply the link for both gaskets just in case, and I will try to show you all a picture of one so that you can see the difference. When I had this intake off here at the house, after I brought it home from the junkyard, the first thing I did was degrease it. I cleaned it super well. Uh, I scotch brighted everything I could. And then I cleaned the mating surface with scotch Brite because you don't want to change the mating surface level, but you do want to clean it really well. Um, I also used a lot of acetone denatured alcohol and uh, some scotch Brite pads on my die grinder to try to get down in the runners. Now the next thing I did, I did not port this intake, but I did polish this intake. So I took my die grinder um, with some high grit sandpaper and ran as far up the runners in each one as I could and made them very smooth and shiny. I did the same thing here. Um, I did not port it much. I probably took a little bit of material off, but I just smoothed everything I could with the die grinder and eased it inside best I could. Um, you're not talking about a major amount of gains there, you know, but little things add up, better flowing. And some people are also gonna be running a larger throttle body, like a 70 millimeter. So you're gonna need to port that intake to 70 millimeters if so. You're gonna wanna buy some die kim layout fluid paint the surface of the intake here, scribe the area that you need, and then mill it out with a die grinder, however you see fit. A die grinder is probably gonna be your best bet. Just don't take too much material. Um, now, when you're doing a Y7 to Y8 swap, you got one weird thing. Uh, the Y7, this one being OBD2B, it runs a three-wire IACV valve on the bottom of the throttle body here. You want to retain that, otherwise you will have a lot of running issues. Don't skip that step. Don't try to bypass the IACV. I learned that the hard way. Um, you will have running issues because 
while you do have an idle screw and then that screw here that adjusts like the TPS stuff, you just you want to keep the ICV. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of issues. Now, back here on the back of the intake, this block off plate I made, this is a piece of quarter inch aluminum. Uh, I took a pencil and a piece of paper, kind of like how you trace a coin, and I made a like basically a template gasket of what should go here. I rough cut it out of aluminum. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. And then I found a bolt um, somewhere off the motor or something that was the right thread for that. I took it to the hardware store and I bought two Allen screws, Allen head screws that would fit that, that were the right length. I put some RTV on it, tightened that, let the RTV cure. So I blocked off where the IACV was. Now this IACV is for an OBD-1. Um, if you're going OBD-1 because you're gonna be turboing, you're gonna wanna run the two wire IACV. And then you're gonna wanna do the three to two wire conversion. Now this car did have that when it was turboed. I've covered that in other videos. I had an IACV back here and I changed the pin out on the three wire set up here to accommodate the OBD-1 one. But now that I'm back stock, you, this is exactly what you're gonna be seeing. Okay, so um, your fuel rail and all that is gonna move right over from the Y7 to the Y8, no issues. Let's see. Um, you wanna make sure your gaskets are good here. This is also gonna be on the ones with the air injection holes. This is a 99 to 2000 Y8, I believe, like I was saying. So you're just gonna wanna put a grommet cap over that. That is another port that was used for the air injection, however that works. Um, as far as JB welding those holes, all I did was put a piece of painter's tape on the inside of this hole so that JB weld couldn't go back through. And then I had it turned on the mating surface. I forced JB weld in onto the mating surface. I cleaned it really well and then I put painter's tape across the whole mating surface and I stood it on the mating surface. When I peeled the tape, everything was nice and sealed, closed up, and I've not had a single vacuum leak. Um, this car has been smoke tested as well, no vacuum leaks, so that's good to go. So this I have blocked off right here. Um, this would be a good spot to run a boost gauge. That's where I had mine tapped off of. Now this bottom one right here, this is running over and it's looped and it's hooking to this little solenoid right there. And that solenoid runs to the charcoal canister. So that's for your EVAP system, this bottom one. Okay. Now, if I can get it. <laughs> A right angle it's hard to see but back here on the back right down at the back of the intake there's an eighth inch nipple as well now that nipple is for factory cruise control so same as with this spot and this spot if you don't have cruise control you just want to put an eighth inch vacuum cap on the port that's down there on the bottom okay this little port runs to your fuel pressure regulator on your fuel rail that's all factory. Depending on if you have an aftermarket setup, you may be blocking that off as well. Um, you know, if you have a fuel rail up here, something adjustable. This big one over here runs right over to your brake setup. Let me come back over here just so you can see it. Runs right into the brake booster. That's your main one here. Now, let's see if I can get some good light here. There's a line up under there. Let me see if I can. So you have this line right here. This runs to the IACV. This is your main coolant line, which loops right back here to the thermostat housing. Then I believe the other line off the IACV 
runs into your coolant tube. I can't quite show it because I don't have the greatest lighting right now, but basically your IUCVs on the bottom, one side's coming in from the right here, and then the other feed off the IUCV is running to your water tube. Um, this is your map sensor, this is your TPS sensor. You don't want to mix those up. That stuff direct bolts right onto the Y8 intake. And yeah, it's um, it's not a hard job, honestly. Uh, you want to clean your mating surface really well. Some motors aren't as clean as mine was, luckily. And you know, just, just make sure your gasket surfaces are wiped down with like some acetone or something. So you get a good sealing surface. Um, you'll see mixed opinions about this and I will tell you I'll be completely honest I put a very thin layer of red RTV on that skunk 2 gasket uh, I've had no issues and I've been boosted and everything else like I said you're gonna see mixed opinions you're gonna see guys say you don't need that you shouldn't do that I like it works great for me work great boosted um, I want y'all to comment, questions, refer back to some of the other ones when I was discussing IACD running issues when it was turbo. Let me know like what y'all are having problems with or or you know like where you're getting tripped up and, and I'll follow up with another video covering exactly like what's going on. Your bolts are all pretty easy to get to. You're supposed to torque those. You should definitely torque these to the correct torque spec. Now I will tell you. All the bolts are very visible, but the one that's right down here on the bottom of the intake. Sometimes you can get a wrench in there. Now, I've been working on cars for a long time. I torqued all of them, but the one right here in the center. I did it by hand, by feel. If you feel comfortable doing that, by all means do it. If you don't, then you need to figure out a way to come up from underneath, kind of by the oil filter with some you know, adapters, probably some swivels, uh, probably some different length sockets and you should be to get a torque wrench on it. Uh, you make it come from down here underneath, but that's the main brunt of it. Um, you know, take some pictures beforehand, keep stuff organized, put your injectors back where they go, put your pigtails back on the correct injectors. You know, it's a very straightforward swap. You're gonna need a little bit of this uh, fuel or vacuum line to run to your coolant stuff and to your EVAP setup like I was showing there. And I don't remember exactly where this little solenoid used to go. I've got it zip tied on the firewall here just so it's out of my way. The car is back in A at the moment. Uh, it's running really well. I just want that to kind of be proof as well that you can go turbo and you can go back stock and there won't be any issues if you don't skip any steps and you you know you pay a reputable tuner and you do everything right it will pay off you know you can enjoy it. I could easily turbo this back in a couple days of working on it when I have time and have this car back turboed back on an OBD1 computer with no issues and be back turbo again. So just don't skip steps, do everything right. Uh, I cover a lot of the steps for, for everything you need in the turbo series. So reference that when you need to. Uh, besides that, everything else has been running good. I've done nothing to the car besides pull the turbo. Um, I drive it every day, it's great. It was great on 6 PSI. Um, I will tell you, 6 PSI will get your toes wet, but you will want a lot more. And, uh, you know, depending on the motor you got, sometimes you can pour a lot more boost into them. But uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to blow this thing up. This is a really good running motor. Uh, I was running that Schaefer's oil that I've showed y'all before, and I, I have linked in some of my videos. And even after I went back in a... I ran that oil for a while and I drained it and it was still very golden, no metal, metal particles. Um, you know, so that just goes to show even the spark plugs were the right color, you know, with a good tune and patience, you can really have your car running right and not, you know, absolutely shredding the inside of the block and, and bearings and stuff like that. So now I want to go on to the next thing. I want to update y'all on the latest project. I got a 1989 EF hatchback. Uh, there's nothing under here right now. I've got all that pulled out. I'm gonna get the rest of this pulled out and clean this bay up really well. Take y'all over to the other sides of the car. See if we can see into the window. It's got a nice interior. 
Um, it's actually a full interior car. Door panels and all are in great shape. It's uh, like a blue interior. Now, this car is going to be the race car. Um, I don't know when the EK will be turboed again. I'm not super concerned about it. It's fun to drive. Um, it's not fast, but that's just part of owning a D-Series Honda. But I have a D16 Z6 block torn down right now. Everything's in great shape. The crank's in great shape. No spun bearings. Cylinder walls look all right. So the next step is to take this motor to the machine shop, have them bore and hone it. We're going to do a simple Viterra Speed Factory setup, and we're going to be building a Z6 engine for high boost for this car. Uh, this car is like, in a sense, ready to roll. I'm probably going to put a set of better coilovers on it. I'm sure it's got something like max speeding rods, and they're not super reliable when it comes to suspension. Uh, that's what came on this EK, and they rode horribly. So, um, you know, I do want to keep a lowered look on this one. Uh, but yeah, so this is the new project, and this is what we'll be building the motor for. Be doing a lot of a lot more turbo stuff on this. Okay, so uh, I think the last thing I showed y'all maybe was doing that uh, Coleman mini bike. Um, the red Coleman mini bike that I was working on actually ended up going to a guy and I traded it for this. Uh, this car came without engine and trans. Um, so that was fine because I already had some spare motors and stuff like that ready to build. And now that the red Coleman's gone, I've been working on the Megamoto frame, the little ADCC. Uh, I've got a motor set up for it right now. Let me show y'all. This is the current setup. I don't know if I showed y'all the last video that I do have a powder coating set up as well now. Um, it's an Eastwood 250 dual voltage and uh, it works really well. Uh, powder coated a few things for some customers and uh, some stuff for myself and it's doing really good. I actually repurposed a uh, 3D printer enclosure. They're like 30 bucks and uh, it came with the LED so I repurposed it into a powder coating booth. It does not have a fan but it really gets the job done as far as containing everything and keeping everything clean. Here's the Z6 motor. Got it completely stripped down, oil pump, rear main, girdle, block. Everything looks good in here. There's a little D16 pistons. And this is, so this motor I picked up used, this D16, this is what we're gonna be building for the blue car. And you can see it's got the EGR intake here. So, not exactly sure what I'm gonna be doing. Um, comment if you've got a Z6 intake that you'd be willing to trade me for for d-series parts or or whatever or if you'd be interested in selling me um i'm definitely looking for one i have a z6 head that we're probably gonna get uh done up maybe just get the surface checked and then probably gonna be changing valve guides and stuff and going with like a street savage cam from speed factory in the future the main thing i want to do is get this board and honed and built even if it's on stock head for now. Uh, I can always put the cam and stuff in later. It's gonna be my project car. I'll have a daily, which will be the EK. So if it's down with the head off for a month, it's not gonna be a big deal. I'll be doing power steering or AC on this car. Uh, not super worried about it. Like I said, I'm probably gonna even be selling the interior on the EF. Uh, it's in flawless condition. Probably keep the dash, but I'm gonna be doing some aluminum like car doors and uh, you know, just kind of like a stripped down interior, probably just stuff like uh, sound deadening mat, just to kind of knock the noise. But I really want that car light as possible so we can uh, hit some nice pulls with this motor. But until then, subscribe, like, comment, let me know what y'all want to see. Uh, stay tuned, and I'll be coming out with a lot more stuff here soon.